Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 205. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have a new digger, Cleverly Blonde, who's dug up win games backslash gg backslash affairs. Normally, I'm not one to interfere with the affairs of others, but... Well, we got a game that somehow has something to do with that. <laughs> Maybe. Um, got some DLLs, some setups. Um, we do have a readme. Now, apparently, whatever this game is called, the acronym is AOTC. Hmm... Affairs of the Court. Okay, so this is actually going to be a legal type game or something. Welcome to CR Software Solutions Affairs of the Court. We hope you enjoy your time with this program. Well, let's see what the help file says. Um, already starts with a how to register, and apparently this is only $9.95. And apparently the benefits to registering simply gives you access to higher difficulty settings and, you know, customer support. Affairs of the Court is played with a standard 52-card deck. Oh, it's a card game. Okay, so this isn't a legal type thing. <laughs> then why is it called a... F we'll figure this out. The object of the game is to reduce your opponent's point total to zero from a starting position of 100 points. The first player to reduce his or her opponent's to zero is or less is the winner. The game is divided into rounds, turns bonuses... 13 turns and a bonus comprise a round. Each turn is comprised of one card being played by each player. Points are updated at the end of each turn, at the end of the bonus. Okay, so it basically matches them up. Ace of Diamonds doubles and reverses the effect of a numbered card. Okay, so the way this is shaping up with these rules here, this almost seems like it would be a card game that would be better played with cards that actually tell you what they do as opposed to standard playing cards, just because of the sheer number of rules and specis, specis, specif, I was trying to say, uh, I know what word I want to say, but I'm having trouble saying it. Let's actually try playing this thing. So, Affairs of the Court. Who will I be playing? Um, you will be playing me. No. Um, so do I just go deal then? Okay, so it's got my name there. So it says we've got an unregistered version, as expected. So currently we're both at 100 points. We're trying to decrease the opponent to zero. Um, well, at least we can choose some different card backs here. Um, let's go with the Fractal, because it's me. I like Fractals. So I can either keep or discard this. Um, it's a clubs. I'm guessing if I keep, if I kept this, would that? Oh. And now I have to discard. Okay. Because yeah, if I keep a card, then I have to discard the next one. Or if I discard a card, I have to keep the next one. Okay, I'm not quite sure exactly how many cards are going to be going through here. Um, if it's if we're each keeping one and discarding another, then we're going to end up with a hand of 13 cards by the end of this. So yeah, I'll keep the nine of hearts. Okay, so I get to lead off. So I guess I'm just going to hit him with a king of clubs right off the bat. Oh wait, I forgot the 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 cards that are not. Numbered cards actually have special effects. So the king blocks and captures other cards of a lower rank if played on the same suit. King in this case has captured the other card, and the other card now appears in the hand of the player who played the king. Okay, so I have his three of clubs now. So I guess maybe now I'll just play that three of clubs against him. Diamonds and clubs subtract points from the opposing player. Since both players play diamonds or clubs, the value of the cards are added together and subtracted from the player's score with the lower card. Okay. 
I do like that it's showing little windows here at the side to describe what's going on with particular cards when they show up, but let's see, I think against this one, let's try Jack of Spades. You must follow suit when possible. Okay, so right off the bat, I have a problem with that rule, because here's the thing. How's the other player supposed to know if I have a particular suit in my hand or not? If I didn't follow suit, I would have to pretty much show my entire hand to prove that I don't have that suit. And like, I mean, there could be, there could be certain circumstances with some games where that would make sense. But we're talking about a game here where I'm trying basically to not give away like what it's going to come down to in my hand. So that seems a little weird that that would be a rule. Like it works for something computerized like this, but okay. And it seems who it seems the lead whoever leads a turn switches every turn or something like that. So now does it have to be the same suit? Okay, so it has to be the same suit even if it's the same number. So with the native diamonds, let's do another jack of diamonds. Okay, so jack is just a block. Like I mean, so far this game is not going anywhere particularly. <laughs> particularly far like I mean I'm at 99 computers at 100 so yeah so here's a situation where I don't have the same the same value card the same lem suit so if I do play something like say this six of hearts here okay so when the suits don't match it depends on whoever has the higher value card is the effect that take is the effect that happens so I got six points and he didn't go anywhere well, neither of us went anywhere because spades would affect would subtract from both of us and so i guess it just continues until until one of us gets bored or something i'm not really enjoying this because it just seems too arbitrary like there's so many rules going on here so yeah that was affairs of the court i'm not sure i particularly enjoy this one but it is interesting all the same. It's just, it's, <laughs> the rules are so convoluted. Next up, we have a team dig from Michael Madsen and Jonathan Gosselin. Win games backslash arcade two backslash wheel. This is either going to be a driving game or a wheel of fortune knockoff. And we got a lot of wave files, so there's going to be sound effects. Um, W O L. Well, it's not going to stand for Wheel of Fortune, maybe Wheel of Luck. <laughs> um, there is a winner dot wave, so I've got a funny feeling this might take after Wheel of Fortune. Not to mention a phrases dot text. Um, we have a bunch of text files, actually. Um, what's the file ID says? Wheel of Luck. <laughs> so I wasn't too far off there. <laughs> Windows 3.1, game similar to Wheel of Fortune, players take turns guessing letters to solve a phrase, one to three players, use an edible phrase file. Okay. So, requires VB Run 200, which it did not come with, but I'm pretty sure I've got that in my Windows Sys now. So, what's the license.txt say? Apparently this was made in 93 by uh, Dan Pirati, or Pirati. A lot of difficult names on this show by now. Um, for ordering of information, see the order.txt. Okay, so order.txt, where are you? Because I want to see how much the guy was charging for this, and apparently he was charging $10. Or he also had another game called Triple Yahoo for $10, and both for $17. So, two games for a little cheaper than $20. Interesting. And apparently this guy was in Ohio, so... Well, let's just get into it, because I'm pretty sure most of us probably know how to play Wheel of Fortune. Um, yeah, 30 day evaluation period. Oh, this looks neat. So we have an actual wheel here with <laughs> sorry and broke spaces, as well as a bonus space and a bunch of dollar values. So the wheel is a bit smaller than a Wheel of Fortune wheel. The Wheel of Fortune wheel has a lot of spaces on it. This one has 16 spaces. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so you have sound on, spin declaration, countdown timer, 
I guess, new game. So player one is me. I'm going to guess that if I don't put in other players, they might be assigned to AI players. Or maybe just nothing at all? I don't know. Because I didn't put in any extra players here. So I guess spin wheel. <laughs> okay, that was an interesting spin sound. Um, apparently there's a timer here, but it's not counting down. It's kind of weird. So it wants me to pick about pick a pick a consonant. What consonant do I want? Yeah, I have a funny feeling this is supposed to be ticking down, but it's not ticking down. <laughs> Unless it's not exactly like Wheel of Fortune. Like, I mean, let's say we've got an S here. Okay. Yeah, it's still not ticking down. I wonder what that's all about. So, another hundred. I'm gonna go for T. Okay. And now we've got a $500 spin. Um, let's go for an M. Nope. And there goes my money. Ooh, a thousand. Gotta make this a good pick. Um, I'm gonna say F. Oh, uh, found one F at least. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy a vowel. I'm gonna buy an E. There's only a single E in this entire thing. Okay, one thing I don't like is that it's not showing what letters are still available. Like, I mean, if I wanted to solve the puzzle, knowing what letters have already been used would be kind of important. And even the original DOS versions of Wheel of Fortune did this by just by sh just sh simply showing all the letters and then just cutting them out as they were picked. But here, it's trying to be smart about it by only lighting up letters when you can actually buy or s select them from a spin. And I'm not sure I'm keen on that. Okay, I think I know what this is. Solve. Okay, at least it's showing me what letters are still vi viable in the solve phase here. The time limit's still not going. I'm guessing the time limit only counts down if there's other players, because that would make sense. But yeah, it's a grandfather's clock. You win! I'm noticing that it's still playing those typical Windows sound effects, though. Even though there was definitely, like, WAV files here that... Yeah, what's up with that? Like, if I actually load this... Okay, um... Why? <laughs> Windows comes with these sound effects! Why are you including them in your game and wasting bandwidth on someone's BBS for something where they already have it? You just have to access the system and you don't have to have it in your freaking game folder. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Hang on a second here. Anyone else get the impression that that actually is been reversed? I knew it! I knew I'd heard that before. So the actual effect here that's included with the game is simply that reversed. <laughs> Which is, yeah, it was one of the most basic effects you can do with the original sound recorder included with Windows 3.1. I'm on to you, whatever your name whatever your name was. I'm bad with names. So yeah, that was Wheel of Luck, which is still trying to get me to register it. <laughs> um, like, I mean, it's an okay Wheel of Fortune clone, but I definitely feel like there's some improvements that could be done, like more distinct sound effects instead of just taking the Windows ones and doing stuff to them. <laughs> But, you know, for what it is, and for something that was only being charged $10 for, like, I mean... The only, the only trouble is, is that... I keep hitting the bonus spot. <laughs> the only trouble is that if you wanted this kind of experience out of this game, you'd probably buy the actual Wheel of Fortune game, because by this point in time, in 1993, when this came out, there would have been 
multiple versions of the actual Wheel of Fortune game to choose from. <laughs> so, now granted, they probably would have been more like 40 or $50, but the point is, is that you could get the full experience or you could get the cheap experience. So I guess in that sense, this does live up to that. And our last dig from Zed Supremus is win games backslash arcade backslash Trek. Well, I know I've already showcased one of the best Trek games on Windows, but let's see if this one's any decent. So we've got some a file id.diz, got a bitmap, some text files, help files, and a simple trek.exe, 97k. So let's see here, what's the file ID say? Wintrek 2.0, explore the final frontier. Now, just because it's called Wintrek doesn't mean it is the Wintrek, because a lot of these things like to call themselves Wintrek. So, see what the README says. So, to install the Wintrek for Windows program, simply copy... <laughs> That's redundant, calling it Wintrek for Windows. We get that it's for Windows just from the fact that it's called Wintrek. <laughs> uh, it's like pin number. And apparently, whatever program this is, it was made by a T-Soft from Texas. So, let's actually check the registration. How much was it charging for this? $8. So, we've had a bunch of cheap software today, which is kind of unusual. Especially given that it's all been Windows. Like, usually people charged more for Windows software because the development tools for actually making stuff for Windows was were pretty expensive. But, let's see what we have here. Okay, this I think I've seen this before. Not necessarily on the show, but I think I've seen like this specific Trek game before. Difficulty setting. I'm going to pick beginner because I have no idea how this one works. <laughs> Even though, again, I think I've seen it before. Also, that's a terrible rendition of the Enterprise, but what do I know? Then we got 7,500 fuel remaining, no shield energy. So we should probably put some energy into our shields. So I guess I gotta type this in. So we'll put uh, 15, 1500 energy. Then we got 12 photon torpedoes. All of our systems are okay. What's the long range sensors like? Okay, so it seems like pretty typical. The blue indicates where we are. Two is the far left number is indicating the number of planets. Far right number is indicating the number of enemies. There are four enemies in this sector. I don't don't think I want to go there just yet. And then the middle number would be star bases. So no star bases around us, but do you have an enemy in this sector? So I'm guessing navigation, engines. Okay, that's annoying. Because this is um a, a because this is a modal window with no border. I can't drag it away from the long-range sensor, meaning I can't see my position here, meaning it's a little difficult to put in the information. So I need to know heading, distance, and warp factor. Okay, so heading 225, distance 1. Well, hang on. So warp factor and distance are different? Huh. Like, usually when you play these old Trek games, it simply calculates, um, it simply calculates how far you go based on the warp factor you put in. Now, there are some Trek games, in fact, I've even covered one, where you can set different warp factors, which adjusts how much energy you use, but how quickly you're able to get to different places. Like, it does say time remaining, so I guess warp 5? Maximum warp with shields up is 0 0.5. You want to lower the shields. Well, fine, lower the freaking shields. And I went south. I did the math right, right? Like, 225 should have been that way? Why did 225 send me that way? Eh, uh, whatever. And I noticed, too, that we didn't. when you lower your shields, you don't get your energy back for it, which is stupid. But, whatever. Engines heading 270, distance 1, warp factor 5. Okay, and now I'm in the correct sector. So short range scanners. There's our Romulan warship, which... <laughs> that's an interesting Romulan warship, to put it mildly. 
So I guess now we should put the shields up. So we'll just put 500 because we're going to lose it the moment we try to warp. And I guess maybe use some phasers or phasors. Energy to be fired from phasers, uh, 250. Apparently that was enough. Romulan at 4-6 destroyed. Okay. There's also this computer thing here. So minimum safe shield setting. Okay, so apparently your computer gives you information to help you figure out where you want to go. So we got a heading and distance calculator. Oh. I think I know why I didn't go all the way into this sector from here. And it's a stupid reason if that's what I think it is. So I'm currently in 4-3, and I want to go to 3-2. So if I use my computer here, so I'm currently in 4-3, and I want to go to 3-2. Okay, it says here the heading required to move to the specified location is 45? That doesn't make any sense. Also, I still can't move this, even though it's... <laughs> Why does this program not want me to move the windows it creates? Why is that 45? Unless it's supposed to be the other way around? 3, 2, 4, 3? Or no, wait a minute. I know what it's doing now. It wants me to put in not only the sector to warp to, but the location inside the sector. That's just... Like, I can't see inside the other sectors. How am I supposed to know where I want to go in that sector? <laughs> this is bizarre. Okay, okay, so I want to move here. Like, 3-2. And I'm currently in 4-3. So, theoretically, like, in theory, right? Oh, well, we do have a probe function. No, I got a funny feeling this is just going to reveal something. Now, let's check. So, heading 315, distance 2. Do you want the lower shield? Sure. Okay, that revealed some stuff, but in a weird way. Okay, so heading 315. Now, I'm going to say a distance of 1.5. Let's see where this actually puts us. The warp factor of 5. Okay, so that actually did put us in here. So, I had a funny feeling it would be something like that. So if we go back to short... Whoa, oh, we're right next to the guy. Um, Let's just launch a torpedo up his, up his tailpipe. That ought to do it, right? So, torpedoes heading 180. Boom. Romulan at 3.5 destroyed. So we've also got travel time calculators here, depending on warp factor. We also got energy needs, depending on warp factor. And like, I mean, we're already start already at almost half the energy we started with because you have to dump your shield energy when you're done with them, which makes no sense. Also, this Enterprise sucks if it only has 12 photon torpedoes. <laughs> That's a pathetic number of photons. There's only one starbase in the entire sector? Or the entire galaxy? How am I supposed to find it without running out of power? Why is there only one starbase in this entire place? Like, I mean, I set this on beginner, right? Set it on beginner. Yeah, three starbases. Now, granted, a different amount of time this time. So it is actually somewhat random. So if I say new game again, three starbases, new game again, one starbase, but 52 time to destroy 51 Romulans. Oh, hey, I managed to get it to do roll four star bases. <laughs> so, yeah, just, it does seem to, there, that there's a bit of randomness to this. I mean, all things considered, I have played worse Trek games, but this is definitely one of the more quirky ones. But, I mean, it does what it's supposed to. It has these computer functions to help help you out, so... Yeah, you know what? It's not a terrible game. Is it worth the... 8 bucks that the guy wanted for it, or 8.50, or whatever it was? Like, I mean... 
if this is your kind of thing, then sure, whatever. It's, <laughs> it's one of the least, least expensive Trek games that was released. It does work. So, yeah, I guess if Trek games are your thing, this would probably be a fine one.